In this video, we're going to take a look at the DBX286S mic preamp and sound processor. I'll be going over some of the features, explain why I got it in the first place, and at the end of the video, why I won't be keeping it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. You can think of the 286S as two or multiple devices in one. What I mean is on one hand, you have a mic preamp to boost your mic signal. And on the right hand side is the signal processing section. Within that part, there are four specific types of processing, compression, de-essing, enhancement, and expansion slash gating. Don't panic if you don't know what any of those mean. I'll go over that in just a moment. But first, I just want to quickly explain my current setup. Right now you're listening to the Shure SM7B microphone connected to the 286S via a XLR cable. The signal is being processed by the DBX and recorded with my Tascam DR60D Mark II. You can feed the signal directly to a camera that supports line level input or a audio interface connected to a computer, for example. Next, we are going to go over each section to explain what it does. If you don't want to sit through this section, just check the timestamp down below to skip ahead. Okay, let's start with the left hand side of the DBX. If we look at the first dial here, it's the mic preamp gain. Basically, we want to set a level as loud as possible to, uh, to get a good signal into the chain without clipping the audio. If it does, the orange or yellow light will light up. We definitely don't want the red light to come on. But basically here for the SM7B, I've got the dial all the way maxed out, which is fine because it provides a nice clean gain for our signal chain. So as long as the first two LED lights up, occasionally the yellow one can light up as well. But generally we want to keep it um, within the first two green LEDs. And then if you need phantom power, it does provide 48 volt phantom power, but the um, Shure SM7B doesn't need it. So don't turn it on. And then moving on, we have a high pass filter. If we turn it on, it tends to remove some of the lower frequencies. But personally, I like to keep it full, a nice full signal, so I'll leave it off. And moving on, we have the bypass button. If we turn it on, then it turns off all the bypass and it just uses the mic gain. But assuming that you want to use all of it since you made the purchase, for the compressor, it's a little bit confusing because it uses what they call a drive knob which is usually what we call the threshold. But using the drive, it basically drives the lower signal, the quieter portion of the audio into a set threshold. And once that hits the threshold level, it will then do the reduction for the compressor. And the other confusing name is density, which is basically the release time or how quickly it reacts to the audio signal. As you can see, I've got it set quite high at the moment. And if we lower it down, um, the compressor will sort of get stuck on for a longer period of time, even if I stop talking. But personally, I like to keep it quite fast to catch the peaks of the audio, but also like releases the compressor quickly so it doesn't keep all the audio way too quiet for too long. So personally, I like to set it slightly higher, but this is obviously down to personal preference. So you need to check it out with your own recording. And then moving on to the de as the name suggests, it helps to remove some of the S sibilant sounds in your voice. Using the frequency, basically just set it somewhere in the middle according to the manual, or you can just test it out, but basically somewhere in the middle is nice and safe. And then using the threshold, we can um, dial it in to see when it kicks in, when it does the LED will light up. So if I just use the word S to test it out, S, S, Diesa, 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 S, S, S. You can see that if you turn all the way up, then the Diesa doesn't sound very natural. It sounds like you have a, a speech impairment or something like that. So you definitely don't want to set this too high. Otherwise, it sounds really weird. It sounds like you're suffocating or something like that. But yeah, just use it sparingly. Don't go overboard. It will sound very unnatural. And also depending on your voice and mic, you probably don't even need that much. But then moving on to the enhancer, which is basically like a two band EQ, if you think about it. So basically it's like a bass boost and a treble boost. And if we dial it up, you can hear that the voice will sa suddenly sound even a lot more like broadcasty uh, radio like, but again, you probably don't want to go overboard because it will sound too bassy. 
with especially with this microphone because the sm7b is already quite bass heavy but this is what it sounds like and we can also add some clarity to the audio if we turn up the uh, high pass again if you get too much then it will sound a bit too ear piercing dial it in but you don't want to go overboard so once again this is with both of them on and i'll turn down the treble again this is with the bass boosted and i'll turn it back down again which is nice and natural which is what i prefer and then we're near the end now moving on to the expander gate basically it's like a noise gate it blocks out any of the noise that you don't want from the background but so we set that using the threshold as you can see if we turn it off then it will let everything go through the signal chain with the indicated by the green led if we slowly increase the threshold you'll see the led turn red that's when it starts to kick in and block out the background noise so I'll just be quiet so you can hear And that means, as you can see, once I start talking, the green LED will kick in. And then when I stop talking, red, it will block out the background noise. But you can also set the ratio. Basically, that will tell you how much it reduces the background noise. You don't want it to be too much. So here I've got it set to about 1.5 to 1, the ratio. But if I turn it up, then hopefully you'll be able to hear how much of the background noise it cuts out. So that's nice and quiet and it barely lets my voice come through so you don't want to use too much again as with most of these settings you probably don't want to set it too high just be gentle with all the setting generally speaking you just want it to be when you're talking you know talking normal volume then you want the green, green led to kick in and then once you stop talking you want the red led to come on so it will block out some of the background noise and then finally, just the last one, depending on your recording device, you can also add some further gains using the output here. Or if the signal is still too loud going into your recording device, you can reduce the output. But if you require more volume, then you can, it's almost like an extra last output boost gain stage on this signal chain. But generally speaking, if you set the mic preamp to the correct level and use some of the compressor that already boosts the signal anyway, but if you, again, if you do need more gain, then you can use this dial, but you just want to make sure that you don't want to clip the audio. So there's an extra LED here to make sure that the audio doesn't get clipped. Whew. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. And thank you if you did listen through that entire section. Now that we know what the unit can do, that kind of explains why I purchased this device in the first place. For the price of around £150 or $220, you are getting a mic preamp with all the processing effects in one unit. Considering a cloud lifter, for example, alone costs around $150. So it's quite an amazing deal for what it can do in one complete device. I purchased the 286S along with my SM7B as I was sure that the Tascam or my camera wouldn't be able to drive this hungry microphone. And in the past, I would literally do all those processing in software anyway. I was hoping I could speed up my entire editing process by doing this in the signal chain itself. Of course, there are cons with this method. If you mess up the settings, the audio will be ruined and baked into the recording. I'm sure some of you might be wondering this point exactly. Most processing can be done in software using plugins. Why take the risk and pay more for a hardware version? For one, although not applicable to me, is if you do live streaming for games or podcasts, for example, then you probably want to do it in real time since you can't really process it afterwards, since it is live. Uh, for me, I was hoping that I didn't have to faff around with different audio plugins in post and keep everything dialed in and consistent once I find the happy setting for myself. But as it turns out, even though this unit impressed me a lot, I won't be keeping it. And the reason is in the past, I would apply a ton of audio filters to my audio with my other older mics. But what I have found with the SM7B is that I don't actually need the de-esser or the EQ and it picks up way less of the background noise anyway. So basically most of the function that this unit provides, which I have explained in the demo section and thought I needed in the past was no longer needed for the SM7B. 
So obviously I still need the gain, but now I'm just using the fat head instead, which is cheaper, but also keeps my setup a lot smaller and simpler. In case you're wondering, by the way, you don't need a fat head or cloud lifter with the DBX. I'll probably go over why in a future review video for the fat head itself. There you have it guys, if you are a live streamer then I think the 2.8 success provides a tremendous value, but if you don't need all the processing, well no, then you probably don't need it either, like me. Now that I have tried it and realized it myself, nevertheless I'm always intrigued to try things out, so that was an interesting lesson for me to learn anyway, and I hope you found it useful too. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a like, it would help me out tremendously for my channel. As always, a huge thank you for watching, my name is Joe, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.